So with our template complete, it's time to start making our mold ribs. And the first step is to cut the boards we're going to use for the mold ribs to the length of the snowboard mold. So what you want to do is measure to the point uh, or to the length of your snowboard mold and make two to three points on the board. Once you've done this, use a straight edge and lay it down. I use a, carpenter, a steel carpenter square. Lay it down so you can connect the three dots and this line will represent the line that you cut along with a circular saw. I also make a second line that's offset an inch and a half to indicate the point where I need to mount my cut guide. And what I use as a cut guide is a smaller steel carpenter square which I fasten down using bar clamps. What I do is I run my circular saw along this cut guide and that allows me to get a nice straight cut and it also ensures that I'm accurately, accurately cutting along the cut line that I want to be cutting along and I'm not forced to eyeball it. I can uh, very confidently cut where I need to be cutting. So you want to be sure that all of your boards are the right length so you should repeat this process for every rib that you put into your mold. The next step is to take our cut board and give it the same shape as our template that we made in part 3. To do this, I am offsetting I'm setting the template on top of the board, but I'm also offsetting it slightly using the width of my steel carpenter square. And what this is, it's a little uh, margin of error because I'm going to be cutting the bottom board along a line I draw with a jigsaw and I'm going to be uh, doing it by hand. Uh, and although I'll be careful, I know that it's going to be hard to be perfect. So by offsetting the template, I give myself a little bit of room to make mistakes. I clamp the template in place all the way along the board because the middle of the template shape is typically a little flexible and I don't want to distort the shape of my template as I draw the line to copy it. So once my line is drawn, I'll remove the template and I'll cut along the line. I mark where the nose is on the board because I want to be sure that I properly orient all the mold ribs in the mold. I try and cut right along the line since I offset it when I drew it initially and I'm trying not to veer too much under it or over it. I want to be right on it. This will give me a little bit of excess relative to the template shape and I'll trim off this excess with the trim router. So now I take my template and I put it back on top of the mold rib that I just cut out and this time instead of offsetting it I make sure the bases are flush. Again 
I use bar clamps to lock them together, especially in the center. I don't want something to bend or distort while I'm working on it. And it's even more important when you're using the trim router because you're using more pressure when you use the trim router. So once I've got this flush and locked in place, I'm going to flip it upside down so that my template resides on the bottom. And the reason I do this is because the trim bit that I use on my trim router, it's a, a flush trim bit, but it has a bearing on the bottom of it. And I want that bearing to run along my template, not the board that sits on top. So make sure the depth is properly set so that that bearing runs along the template and then follow the full length of your template to make a copy of it. Repeat this process for all of the boards and once all copies have been made, put them all together and make sure that they are all the same shape and all properly oriented. Here you see my four mold ribs and my template shape. So now I'm going to sand them all together to eliminate any possible imperfections. I want them all to be exactly the same. And once you've completed this step, you're ready to set up the snowboard mold. I should point out that my snowboard mold is different than a conventional vacuum mold. For a conventional va vacuum mold, you would want to make a lot more mold ribs so you can create one solid block. Um, that would be the full width that you need to work on your snowboard and then what you can do is put sheet metal over the shape and make your snowboard mold that way. Um, but I'm going to show you an alternative way and for the approach I use you only need four mold ribs. <laughs>